Thank you for tuning in to Dante's Harmony. I am Dante Harmon, and I am so excited to have two teachers, two teachers. Um, it's so ironic. Um, both of these gentlemen are teachers in their own right, one at a college, one with his own school. And I am so excited to talk about their production on A Love Supreme featuring the Campbell brothers and these two guys. Stay tuned. Dante's Harmony. I am Dante Harmon, and I am so excited to dive into some great conversation with two online teachers who are musicians in their own right. You're going to meet them in, in, in about a minute, but I'm so glad that they are here with me on today. I believe that you're going to really enjoy what they have to say. Um, as always, please, please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Dante Harmon. And if you want more insight and more information regarding Dante's Harmony, please feel free to go to my website, www.danteharmon.com. So without further ado, I am going to bring to the forefront these two brothers. Listen, um, if you hadn't listened, if you have not listened to the podcast with the Campbell brothers, uh, where we talked about and dived into some really, really great conversation about their John Coltrane's um, presentation um, from their standpoint, the Campbell brothers of a love supreme. You're missing a treat. If you have not downloaded that particular CD, you need to do it today. The Campbell brothers uh, presents uh, John Coltrane's a love, a love supreme their interpretation of a love supreme these two guys that i'm bringing here on today were big contributors to that album um the first person derek bennett who was on bass and did a lot of production work in this on this particular project as well as carlton campbell who was the drummer on this particular project who i found out did some mixing i i found out that he mixed this project we're going to find out right, right now. Derek Carlton, how you doing? My What's guy, up? man, What's going it's, on? Going first on, of all, it's, it's so good to see you all. How you doing? How, how it's, we, we're in the midst of a pandemic. How's the families? How y'all, how y'all faring? Doing well, doing, doing well, well, man. God is good, man. No yeah. complaints, no yeah. complaints, man. So yeah. in spite yeah. of it all, I still got joy. That's yeah, right. Everybody, everybody's alive, man. Everybody's <laughs> alive. Everybody's like, alive and well. <laughs> yeah, right. Alive that's well. that's a blessing, man. It, it's so it's yeah, so much definitely. going on, and um and and like you said, it we're we're in the midst of a, a just a a horrific pandemic, but we're still here. It's that's a blessing yeah. within itself. So yeah, absolutely, hundred um, percent. Yeah, yeah. So I man, let's just dive right in. I just did probably one of the best interviews that I've done in a long time with, with your father, um, Carlton. <laughs> yeah, he's a big up. Big up this man. <laughs> Encourage hey, yourself. There you listen, go. David listen. Harmon, come on. In the Lord. In the Lord. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> man, listen, I, 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 we, we had so much, um, fun conversing. Um, if I decide to do a B-roll take of all of the stuff that we talked about, it will probably have everybody. In I can only imagine. I can only imagine. We cut up, man. And the, the fun part was reminiscing. Um, we were talking about the chosen for you, few, you know, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you, you, you'd have to know the Campbell brothers to understand what the chosen, oh, what the chosen few is. So man, I, man. Come, come on, come on, Carlton. I, I hey, mean, first of all, <laughs> being a little baby man through that just not knowing what they were doing but being around while they were doing it was yeah. just crazy man and like i remember your dad being around and rest in peace pop pap yeah. so rest in peace pap mm -hmm. and and charles flannery coming up and calvin and it was just like i'm thinking oh we're about to go to nashville because all the, everybody's up in rochester mm -hmm. <laughs> working on this in chuck's <laughs> attic man right and 
people still talk about that tape. But the funny thing is, they don't want to do those songs over. And I, I get it. It's the season for songs and stuff like that, man. But yeah, it's some songs on there that I wish we would just go back and just touch at least once, man. Just yeah, once. Be... You, you man, too, Derek. Like... You, sh- you, sh- you share the same sentiments, Derek? <laughs> yeah, that would be, I mean, that would be super cool because, I mean, for one, I, I didn't have nothing to do with them. <laughs> so I, I, at least I could put some flavor. I could put right, some of my right. flavor on there, you know. So <laughs> really? you know, you just it's like iconic to us, you know, coming up in you know mm-hmm. House of God. So that 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 was like man. our cold trains and you know Ellingtons and stuff like that. I, I so still no, I still cool. tell them to date that it, it 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 really was, and that's why I still bring it up because to me, as a teenager, growing up and listening to that project. It was just, it was everything because it was yeah. everything that we wanted to do back then. They did it and they did it with the top singers. They did it with the top musicians and it worked, you know, with what they did in that time that they were doing it, it worked. Um, yeah, they they got to do Promulgate, Carlton. <laughs> they got to <laughs> Promulgate, God's going to ride this train. Yes, sir. Um. Calvin already did. I feel the light over. So he did on his album. He still can do it again. He still do it again. Um, uh, what's the um? Jesus, he will he will answer prayer. Uh huh. I wish we would do that one over. (laughs) I said it's a few of them on there, man. That I just but but my favorite. You got to love your love. (laughs) In the love, love don't do that. Listen, man. Listen, man. That was and and Chuck told me because I said I said listen. I want to redo that song. I, I told Chuck, yeah. I said, he said, call Phil. He said, Phil wrote it. I said, what? Yeah. He said, yeah. yeah he man. said, your dad wrote it. I said, okay. And I and I told them the last time when we talked, I said, I'm going to redo that song. So I'll, well, y'all just go ahead and give me permission you're gonna, now. You're going to have to just have two versions. Man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying. Again, man. It's <laughs> the family dynamic and the band dynamic is always interesting when you're trying to get points across. So it's like, yeah. hey, are you a band member or a nephew right now or a cousin? Right. right. When you make a suggestion, it's like, no, this is a band member talking. Forget the lineage. I think this is a good idea. Mm-hmm. Right. Then, all right, now I'll go back into that nephew son seat. Now I'll go sit down. Right. But that again man those songs man and again that 87 and just the like yeah man yeah. the songs are still relevant here we are in 2022 yeah and we and still those songs still those songs still speak to a lot of what we need and need to focus on hello <laughs> and, and it was music. it was just as relevant then it is as it is now I told Bingo. I told them I said I don't I don't know if they they know what the word promulgate means, so because <laughs> so, <laughs> you know I look you know I was like a teenager when I first heard it, so mm-hmm. when I heard I was like promulgate, so it was <laughs> so it's it's really the the word means to make known to make known the word of God, so that so that was the whole hook promulgate the word of God, so mm-hmm. when they did it you know it I would my story was from the perspective of my dad who mm. came in on bass, Derek, and he contributed. But as Phil and Chuck would say, um, he came in as like a producer because my dad gave me commentary when I heard the the um, the edits. So yeah, he man. Come- so on this one, man, we did. <laughs> and then I told them to, you know, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. It, it was hilarious, and they and they were just they were hollering, you know. Man. Chuck and Phil, they didn't they didn't know what to do with with uh, with that, and and they just they thought it was the funniest thing. But they said your dad was really producing, and, yeah, man. And then he played bass on one of the tracks, and it, it was it was it was one of those staples that you just will never forget. So never, yeah, and we can't. So hey, man, we gonna campaign. Free the chosen few tape. We're gonna start a hashtag. Or something. Straight, gotta, up, gotta... straight up, straight up. As a matter of fact, when I do this podcast and when this goes live, I am gonna hashtag that that say <laughs> free the chosen few. Free the chosen few, man. Free, <laughs> free the chosen few, man. It, yes. it was a hot project. It was a hot yeah, project. Yeah, man. For real, for real. For but real. fast forwarding, man. So from the chosen few, and here you are, Carlton, Derek. Um, second generation, I should say, you know, from mm-hmm. 
um, our fathers, I, I mean, all three of us, our fathers, we're yep, here, we yep. are next generation. And, and now we're producing, we're mixing, we're teaching and, and we're playing and, and doing what they were doing um, to the best of our ability, the way we do it and how we right. interpret it. We went from yeah. a chosen few to now um, John Coltrane's A Love Supreme, Sacred Steel, the Campbell Brothers style, which was, let me tell you guys, phenomenal. Um, I, I, I don't know where to start with them. I, I was telling Chuck and Phil, I, I was really, really impressed with the work that they put in in, in the interpretation, how they were, they were true to the, the music and his approach. And one thing Phil said to me, he said, no one ever in the jazz world ever attempted to right. duplicate yeah. that piece. Yeah. And for me to see you guys take a stab, not only in doing it, but doing justice to it. And for you two to take on probably the, the most um daunting task and 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 going into those solos uh you know first of all let, let's talk about um your 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 Derek I, I'll start with you. you 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 did bass on the album what was your um your take going into doing the album I know it's how long has the recording been since since it's <laughs> like you said on? he just it was seven seven years ago seven years ago seven years so seven years ago you guys recorded this and you're you're practicing you're doing whatever you need to do to get prepared but how how did how did you approach this from a because you, you know you you want to give you want to give justice to the the original musicians and, right. and the, exactly. art, the 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 true art to the jazz um voicings and and and, and melodic and the melodies to this particular album exactly but approaching it from the, the Campbell brothers, sacred steel, churchy style of playing. Right. What was your, what was your mindset going into it, Derek? I, I'm just curious. So, well, first of all, it, the great thing about it is that we did it live. Mm -hmm. So capturing that, you know, whole entire dynamic, uh, live actually benefited us, you know, to the extreme because we get to feed off of each other right. and not play on top of something and not even get that feeling at the time that we're sitting there. Um, and, the, you know, the atmosphere was perfect. You know, where we were yeah. in uh, Amsterdam, right, Carl? Yeah. Yeah, yep. we were in, the, the crowd was crazy. Um, just the atmosphere was just ridiculous. So wow. um, approaching that song, and I will get into this, I'm pretty sure, you know, mm -hmm. later on generally. But as far as a solo goes, uh, specifically, if I could speak to that. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really, when I came to and listened to the project, you know, I heard what the bass player was doing mm -hmm. and I said, this is our interpretation, you right. know, generally. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what we made it out to be. So I tried to figure out, OK, what's going on in the song right. uh, specifically mm -hmm. and try to uh, on top of that, if you listen to a love supreme, there's four four different sections. So Correct. my bass part is going into the next section. So me thinking, OK, trying to set up the next section while uh, doing justice to the first part or the, the first reference that we did. Um, with my bass line right. and, you know, kind of play off of the love Supreme. Cause at the end of that first, uh, at the end of that first section is, is chanting a love Supreme, a love right. Supreme a love. We're all chanting that at the same time. Right. So, you know, just kind of building off of that, mm -hmm. um, really just a, a simple, like probably minor pentatonic or minor triad mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so staying right there and kind of repeating that. So everybody kind of gets mesmerized by the, dun, 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 dun. And then inverting it and mm -hmm. keep going up and up and, you know, just doing different little versions of that, which is actually pretty simple to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the capturing the, the the feeling of it. <laughs> right. But capturing the feeling of it was was completely different. Right. You know, um, for especially for a bass solo, you know, the, the whole, um, you know, model and, and everybody's. Uh, meme behind bass solos is, is, <laughs> right you know you want to walk out the room when the bass starts going so i to try to make it interesting enough to add some dynamics here some some uh bending notes you know to try to mimic a saxophonist or even still guitar at the time when we you know that we're playing right um just make it interesting make it different not as if it's a bass solo mm -hmm. uh so that's really what my mindset was trying to set up the next piece really and actually staying true to what we just finished yeah so yeah amazing well, you did justice 
Carlton, I think you oh, probably wanted to sure. add something in there because. You... <laughs> no, nah, I mean, this dude fake humble, man. <laughs> this dude, you know, this is... I like how you put that. He's fake a humble. Medi- a mediocre, you know, <laughs> arpeggiation. Of, like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> seven years later, it'll be seven years next month. Seven wow. years later, wow. solo, solo still speaks for itself, but speaks to the work that you did, man. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Appreciate Kudos that. again, my guy. Kudos again. Appreciate wow. that. Appreciate that. It, it, yeah, and it, it's, a, it's a lot to say about the musicianship on it and to to talk about um, the approach to how you guys, you know, were able to learn the the you know some of the standards and and i'm talking to two professors here um you know we, when it comes down to to teaching music so i'm, I'm sure this was kind of in your forte in your mm-hmm. vocabulary something that you were excited about doing but it took a lot and i'm sitting and listening to the changes and the progressions and and and, and all of the theory that comes out in the playing and to convert that into how we play the sacred steel style of of, of playing in, in in genre of music and to interpret it in such a churchy way <laughs> and you still get it you still like the essence of what the the true the real project is but then i'm 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 a, I'm, I'm listening to the campbell brothers with, with with Derek bennett on bass and carlton on drums and it's like well i i feel like i'm in church because you guys yeah. are giving it to you y'all are giving it you know giving me that so so carlton one of the things your dad said that you did on this project was was mixing outside of yeah. the drumming, so, which we'll get to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was um, fortunate. And the reason why I say fortunate is because mm-hmm. they could have asked anybody to put their hands on the project. Mm-hmm. And um, for those two guys who, uh, well, those three guys at the time, rest in peace, Uncle Derek, mm-hmm. um, yeah. for those guys to trust me to sculpt the sound for the project, um, it meant a lot. I, that was my Grammy because wow. if my mentors, the guys that got me into this thing called production that inspired me to be an engineer and that invested oodles of time, resources, and energy and made things available for me to to do this, mm-hmm. for them to say, hey, we're going to give you a shot, that was almost like that was that was validation of okay I'm 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 good enough. Right. So <laughs> I made it. <laughs> yeah, I made it. Y'all can say what y'all want to say. I know I'm good enough because Dante, you come from a very freaking musical family. So <laughs> yeah. you know for a fact how yeah. that is when yeah. again, rest in peace, Uncle Ant. Yeah. To hear him say you're doing that right. Oh, I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> I just been vindicated by the goat of goats. God bless right. you. Yeah. So for them to allow me to mix that, man, that to mix the project was um again, that that was like that's a feather in my cap. Yeah. Um right. because again, as I, as I said, we could have reached out to at this we could have reached out to anybody in the industry to put their hand on this project. Yeah. And they would have jumped at it. And um now I will say I had it still was an audition. So okay. if things didn't go right, <laughs> <laughs> they left the door open. <laughs> they they, they, they would have made them call. It's the same thing like in church. Yeah. Uh brother, you playing good, but we gonna hit you with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Showed it that. So um yeah. that that made me more hungrier to to dive in and to service the project as best as possible so that um one that could be on my resume, but two, uh, I wanted to see the part project through all the way to the end. Um, as you mentioned, Dante, this is a monumental commission to fuse two worlds that I think helped shape me as a musician: Sacred Still Church and jazz. And yeah. so, to be able to fuse these two together, uh, and to be able to have a hand on something that I think, not because I'm playing on it, but just because of the body of work, I think years to come people are going to come back to this and say hey here's a turning point mm. in music history wow so, that, yeah. that's a great point um because it, it, it actually is i think the mere fact that no one from the jazz world did what you guys did in recreating the whole project is monumental with by itself um yeah. the fact that nobody and and even hearing um 
other musicians say, yeah, we we will do certain things. We'll perform certain songs, but no one really has ever attempted to not only duplicate or try to, you know, replicate the, the, the that whole project, but no one in the jazz world would do it. That yeah. says a lot. You know, it, it's yeah. it's different when you when you play a song here or there. Um, but to to come at an album the way you guys did it. Yeah. It's the funny thing about that. <clears throat> the funny thing about that was it, it's I'm sure they talked about it, too. I didn't get a chance to listen to. But mm -hmm. um, as, as far as the feeling behind all of those pieces. Right. Yeah. So we had to kind of convert our thinking in the beginning when we started trying to, you know, arrange. OK, what are we doing now? So in my mind, I'm thinking like, OK, call to worship. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do let's do it. Let's do it a jewel style type of song. You know what I mean? Right. All right then we churching after mm -hmm. that. You know, mm -hmm. straight up mm -hmm. hardcore church, and then we doing like Fallout him. You know, right. That that type of thing. <laughs> right. it, that's really that's really what it felt like and what it is when you listen wow. to the album. Um, and that's what we tried to capture. So it's more so a feeling than you know theoretical notes and phrases and arpeggios and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's why a lot of people that try to recreate can't recreate because they're trying to get too close and don't hit it right and don't have don't have right. a feeling so we were able to grab the feeling and it was funny because we tried to do that at first and i'm thinking in my head like uh we, this, this is not gonna work when it's trying to do you know verbatim what they did right so i'm glad when um i can't even remember who actually commissioned us i can't remember who said it i'm pretty sure phil said um just do y'all like camera brother i want y'all you I know, think to do they, what y'all do. And that's something that they did state um, him and yeah. Chuck. They, they said that they, they came to a point where they were like, you know what? We'll, we'll never be able to. No, we can't. Right. And, Man, yeah. Think <laughs> McCoy Tyner. Hello. Coltrane. Elvin Jones. Exactly. Jimmy uh, Garrison. Mm -hmm. Garrison. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Garrison. Come on, man. You you name yeah. him Mount Rushmore's for all those instruments. That's right. Yeah. And that's them in their peak of I'm going to prove everybody wrong about what we can and can't do. Right. So right, they exactly. had a point to prove with that record. You're trying to re. Of course, people can't tap into that. And then another side I think people don't realize is that doing the doing the study of Coltrane and his history. Hey, Coltrane's a preacher's kid. Right. So a lot of the music is spiritual. Yeah. And so that's the benefit that we have of being. So getting sacred steel or bump that church boys that yeah. allowed us to tap into which a lot of folks don't have that cheat code which is right. hey man when you when you got the is is holy ghost and you're doing <laughs> something something from a from a from a, a pure place mm -hmm. that's going to connect and translate and transcend and every single time every single without fail yeah. and and again yeah. we we are the, the the whole premise was yeah do it sacred steel style but once we started like reading the books and just started, I know I read the book and just like how he even got inspired to even come up with those movements and what they were actually speaking to. If you look at how the piece is laid out, it almost speaks to salvation too. Yes, it does. You have to acknowledge, you have to resolve. Mm -hmm. Then once I resolve, I'm going to get saved. I'm going to pursue mm -hmm. to be saved. And mm -hmm. now here's the Psalm of my salvation speaking to how I've been, Hey man, it's right there. It is. <laughs> so yeah. it's 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 say la, right? <laughs> so yeah. um that's that that piece, those musicians, and again, I know for me, Elvin Jones, like, dude, one of the greatest, I don't care what forget genre, greatest drummers, period. Yes. Um, ever. Phrasing, veracity, all of that good stuff. To be able to just even sniff at that and for it to be received well from that standpoint hey man god is good bro that's all i can say because it ain't it ain't our own doing <laughs> it reflects yeah. and all that yeah. this yeah. yeah god be praised man it, it, it reflected yeah. on listening to it and again for any of you all um that are listening to dante's harmony podcast right now please go download the Campbell brothers, um, a love Supreme. You will not be disappointed. Um, one, one of the things you, you, you all said that I want to kind of dive into a little bit is, 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 is being, being your own musician. 
um, what I appreciate about both of you guys and, and how you contributed to the album, um, not only from a mixing and, and a technical standpoint and, and arrangements, but your, your musicianship, the spirituality that you bring into your musicianship, the originality that you bring into your musicianship. Um, there's a lot to be said. Um, we, we live in a world now where everything is, I don't know, we, we, we have YouTube, Yes. <laughs> we we have yes. all kind of software out there and mm -hmm. you know you, everyone wants to sound like someone else and duplicate what someone else can can do but when you talk about somebody that is original i'm, I'm looking at two originals right here i mean wow. from a standpoint of of your art i i've 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 watched you both um derek you're you're a lot of the videos that you put out man geez have gone viral in just your your just some of the basic tutorial um, approach to the instrument and, and thumping and, 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 and melodic, you know, scales and, and <clears throat> different things. What I appreciate what you guys brought to the album is, is just that, that whole concept. Um, yeah. There are a lot of musicians who are going to listen to this and a lot of musicians who are still learning and, and trying to find their way. Um, what, what, what would you say to them? from a from a bass player Derek you know in 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 retrospect to approaching the instrument you guys took one of the toughest albums one of the most revered jazz albums you made it churchy right. you made it yours you yeah. took the bass part and you made it Derek's you know yeah. how do you what 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 would you tell someone in 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 going through that that whole that's thing. tough yeah. um only thing i really would say is i mean growing up how we grew up we have a one-up already yeah. yeah uh so you know to be different or to have that different sound um just solely by the way i grew up listening to music or hearing it because you know a lot of house of god churches really didn't have too many bass players it right. was mainly maybe just still drums or maybe still lead or rhythm right. and drums so a lot of bass players weren't there right. so you kind of had to fill in the gap because a lot of times still players will play the bass part or something you know every once in a while come up on the top you know right. blah 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 so you kind of had to fill in so i almost felt like i had to create my own way anyway mm. um just from listening to different players and different still players and different uh rhythm uh players and especially listening to phil right um you know, when he was playing bass before or even Derek, when he was some of the bass lines, but people don't even realize or understand Derek was playing some crazy bass lines on the steel. Say, say that again. Say like, that again. I, I, like, I don't think a lot of people don't really talk about that. Like he he like literally held down bass period, on, a, on, on an on eight steel, string fender on an eight string fender, <clears throat> held it down and did crazy bass lines. Some that I still literally do on our shows whenever wow. we play. So um you know, just the aspect of us growing up different, um, we we have that advantage, and I always try to recognize that and say that because somebody may be in this in a predicament like, okay, how can I get my own sound? And I've had this advantage of growing up the way that I grew up, and you right. may not have. So that's one thing I would say to that. You know, to that point. But on the other end, is it is listening to other instruments. Yeah. You know, regardless of what you know field you're in. Uh, whether it be, you know, organ, keyboard, once I started kind of venturing out, that was my go to, like, you know, listening to piano players, organists, um, not just not playing the norm, like stretching out as much as you possibly can, right. um, playing those types of lines, studying still players, studying saxophone players, mm -hmm. um, playing the lines that they play that may be impossible to try to play on bass, you know, trying to tackle that. Right. Um, and I spent a lot of time doing that and trying to create my own sound and grabbing from here, grabbing from there, along with the technical side. I say this all the time. It's like once you grab that, you know, that Holy Ghost with the theory, mm -hmm. like I, it's it's we have the cheat code. Right. Like we don't even understand, you know, and a lot a lot of the younger guys, I try to say that I think we talked about that before when, when we did the, we did the other podcast. Mm -hmm. Um and just, you know, you already have something special. Once you pair that, you know, with the technical. Right. There's, there's really no limit. Yeah. No just, limit. It's just tapping in. It's, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's tapping in. You're, you're absolutely 100%. right. We, we had that advantage in, in growing up um, to, to be able to, to, to be exposed to that from an early age. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we understood what it was to go into that vein. 
But yeah, absolutely, um, no, that you 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 make a great point, Carlton. I, I, same question, man. I, I mean, even from a from from a drummer's um, aspect, and and I know Derek, you talked about the solo, man. Carlton, you you gave justice. Jeez, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like <laughs> like for real, dude. Like just straight up. You 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 for a good three and a half minutes, man. You went there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you went there. I, 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 I still I still that, have man. the drums behind me. I can still yeah, do some little something. Come on, you, I, Come on Don. I got all I got all the vessel, but I I man. still got some left in the tank. Listen, man. <laughs> you know what? Wait, wait. That was it. Was funny, man. It was funny because they told us was that was that solo that really that long? Was that three and a half minutes? I think it was about. Um, let me well, check. It actually. Honestly, it was three longer three minutes that. forty seconds. I had to Are cut, you serious? I had to cut it down twice. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> but they, but, they, but they said, "Okay, get loose," and that's the worst thing you could possibly say to either me or Carl. It's like, "Okay, go ahead and take it. Take your time. Don't do that." That's what they literally said. Take your time and. <laughs> Okay, uh, you, and it's what uh, it is. Going to be in for some, yeah. And that was <laughs> yeah. the thing. It opened us up so much. It's like, okay, yeah. this is you. Do yeah. whatever you would like to do, and that's just. Yeah, and I think that's a that's another that. thing that can be stated as well. Like when you when you're given the liberty and the freedom mm-hmm. to yeah. be authentically you, right? And you tap in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, man. That, <laughs> well, one, I hate solos, okay. so <laughs> I'd rather have a song feel good than just be drums. A song with just mm-hmm. drums is, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, it's racket. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cause, cause what, and what, what I mean by what I mean by that is people can't hum. Most folks can't hum a drum part. Right. So, but you can feel and you can move to that. So right. I'd rather it feel good than like, you know, be expressive. So in this day and age, everybody's hitting up YouTube and you can Instagram and TikTok a lick of the day and all that kind of stuff like that. But right. like what helped, what was my foundation of finding my own voice was my, my drum hero. So Again, Uncle Derek, R.I.P. to that's my drum go to the yeah. day I to the day I go to the upper room. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and then guys like yourself, man, Dante, yeah. I never forget. We were at Atlanta Church and you showed me this Leco, this Dave Weco combination. Oh, my gosh. You remember that? Man, man? <laughs> ooh, yes, that unlocked so much because I'm like, I, I'm hearing what he because I had back to the basics. And I had the cassette tape. I'm like, okay, I hear what he's doing, Mm -hmm. but I didn't have the VHS. So I'm like, man, what is he doing? Like, I'm hearing it. And you were like, man, you're doing that wrong. You're killing yourself. I'm like, no, I'm playing it right. Like, it sounds right, but you're not playing it right. And you've taken those five minutes after church to show me that was like uh, achievement unlocked. I'm off to the races. Um, Wow. And then other drummers, man, like Shane Lee, Ivan Shaw. I'm again, Archbishop, Archbishop Wayne Felton, David Kimbrough, uh, yeah. Terrence King, um, Cecil, Cecil, uh, uh, Benji. Like all these guys, most folks won't know their names. No, but they impact, will after this. <laughs> but the impact that these did that these men had on drumming, um, but for me, I, you all are heard. Anytime I sit behind a drum kit, I you you all are being heard in some form or fashion. Wow. And like Derek said, that's the difference. Like because yeah, we didn't crazy. we didn't grow up with choir music all the time. Right. We had to find ways to be expressive, but not mess up the groove or the jam. So how do you do that to where yes. you're being yourself? Yeah. But yet, man, I've been working on this thing for two months. I'm gonna throw it in here. And mm-hmm. hey, man. Some folks may not know. Some folks may know. My dad was notorious for don't do that. Uh, stop. Play straight. Like I said, I've, there were many of those Sundays <laughs> on that car ride home. Hey, that's your butt. You had to like, hear that. Yeah, man. What? So, <laughs> so <laughs> to to even have that moment in time and space to even do that drum solo, yeah. um, it was a. Uh, um, it was a combination of all those inspirations of church and then all that time that my parents, uh, both my mother and father, invested in me, allowing me to practice at the house however long I wanted to and, and investing in my drum kits and, oh, I want to upgrade to this this drum set. Now I'm tired of this drum set and them not saying no. 
Right. And then to my uncles always pouring in, to my great uncles pouring in, um, to all of my great uncles, my uncle David <laughs> Hager, he gave me a key to our church, which was the <laughs> ultimate cheat code because cheat code. my <laughs> grandparents' house was next door to the church. So he was like, all right, man, listen, if you're going to be in here, he showed me how to turn the heat on, how to turn the lights on. So now I'm being trained as a deacon. <laughs> but yep. hey, with access, I get to practice. <laughs> but I got access, so it's things like that. And and, and what I want to say is like, hey, young musician, build a relationship with for church musicians. Mm -hmm. Build a relationship with your church. Um, it's not all about a paycheck. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. about the benefit of the relationship. Yeah. So if you're serving, hey, talk to them. Hey, can I come down here and practice? You know, a couple of days out of the week. Um. You know, if it's possible, that was more paramount because now I'm not disturbing the family with practicing. Mm. It's just me working it out with God. So all those times I would practice at the church, that actually get, got me got, got me comfortable to play in that room. So mm -hmm. when the opportunity finally came to play in service back then, I wasn't scared of the room, right. you know, because the big auditorium of Goodman Street is like, man, that that corner, right? Everybody talk about that corner. The right. corner was legendary, man. There's so many jams from right. that corner. It's <laughs> right. ridiculous. Yeah. But to be comfortable being able to practice in that facility, like that helped. And, and, and again, oh. playing in church, there we go. hypercritical, hyper critique, anything you would do moment in your musical career because that's your family, yeah. your peers, uh, the person you're trying to impress to talk to after church. Yeah. So you got all of that happening in one setting. Yeah. And that might be your one moment to break through what you're going to do with it. Out in outside of church, most times they're, you're hired to be there. So they already know that you're good. But in church, you got to prove yourself. You got to, hey, man, can I play the offering? Can I play the benediction? You know, can I just get on, please? And once you get a shot, all right, I'm going to run with it. <clears throat> That's how you find your voice because, hey, man, you got 15 drummers trying to play. So what makes you special? What makes you different? Right. And Dante, Derek, y'all can speak to this. I don't care who your father is. That made it harder to get on because yeah. your father was playing. No, you're not ready to sit out. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you know that you are. But they're like, no, uh -huh. you're going to really earn it. When you get on, somebody else is going to vouch for you. That's right. And that, all of that allows you to build your voice because it's not being handed or given to you. Right. It's you working at it. And the that that desire to be better because I want my shot, all that pours into both as far as musician, now throw on the cheat code of being saved. The sky's the limit, man. And yeah. it's not even about being right. super spiritual. I know we're talking about that, but I'm sorry. That, that's just the reality of the, of the that's the reality of the situation. I can't take claim for my giftings that God has given me. Yeah. I'm trying to cultivate them and, and maximize them, but I know for a fact I am nothing without him and everything with him. So it is. Yeah. That's I it. couldn't have said That's it better. It. That's it. That's I could it. not have said that better. And you, you, you bring up a lot of points, man, and 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 thank you. Thank you for that. Um oh. man, I <laughs> I man, I, I forgot all about that, man. <laughs> Bro, tell you man, I I remember the I still remember the lick to this day, man, what it was. Wow. Yes. Yeah. People don't realize that, man. It's like those little moments that you yes. just sit down and spend time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Keyshawn Hunter, he he laugh at me all the time. But it's this one time I asked him to show me something. He actually showed me, and it changed my bass player, period. Wow. Just like he don't believe thing. it. He, I, don't believe he, he really don't believe it. I, I, I know exactly what it was, and I, I literally could play it right now. But it changed my whole thinking of playing bass. It, you yeah. know, it's it's the little things like that that I think, and 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 for those of you all that are listening to it, and you're a musician, do not take what you do for granted, and oh, what you sure. show someone else. Sure. Oh my goodness! 100%, I mean, to 100%. hear this even now in 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 Carlton, what you're saying, Derek, when Kashaya hears this, man, he's he's probably gonna flip a lid, man, because he because time. it's the little things, it's the little moments, like Absolutely. you said, Carlton. It was five minutes, Derek. I'm five sure it's about the same. You know yep. where where he he just took time out of his schedule, did whatever um, he he needed to do in that moment. But yeah. you're still reflecting. You still remember. Oh, absolutely, that, absolutely. You remember that. That's that's important. And um, right. some sometimes even as musicians, we feel insignificant, 
And and mm-hmm. I say that. I say that because as men, sometimes we don't say it. We feel it. We won't mm-hmm. say it. We won't put a voice to it. But we mm-hmm. feel like we're not noticed. We feel like, oh, you know, my time is up or I'm not contributing this. or And it's not that. It's what you've done. It's what yeah. you're continuously doing. It's, it's, it's how you can give back, you know. And um, when you hear conversations like this, it's encouraging. To that wherever yeah. you are and you've done something for someone, like don't stop because no, somebody's going to benefit from what just little bit you give them to take them over the top. So yes. absolutely, yeah, man. Yeah. And you can't you can't get with closed hands. You can't. So if you're inspiring to be better, you got to empty out. Hello. So yeah. that he can put something else in there. So if somebody's asking a question, that may be your moment of God about to align up for you to get your next deposit. Let that go. Release. Share. Yeah. We are supposed to die empty. We're Come not. On. We can't take this stuff with us. So let's pour out as much as you can. You never know who you're going, who you're reaching, and who that moment in time is going to inspire to do greater exploits to you. That's, that's right. the legacy. That's the lineage. That's how you keep a gener. A, a sacred still is what we. Sacred still is what it is because mm-hmm. of people taking time here and there and sharing. Can you imagine if the previous generations never took time with anybody, where, where we would be at? Right. Oh, God, yeah. Like, I, I, I wish I could do, you, you say that, Carlton, I wish I can do Chronicles. I actually, I'm going a, I'm to a find the tape. I have a VHS tape of us in a choir room. <laughs> oh, I got to wow. oh, listen. Too? Listen. Wow. Me, Robert, um, Chuck, <clears throat> Phil, Derek, um ted walked through um there was so many people andy um <clears throat> in the choir room and you all i, I just i just say choir room because but that we was know our spot is. yeah <clears throat> so in in nashville tennessee for for those of you all that um, don't know are listening and don't know <laughs> you're eavesdropping on uh in a, in a very in-depth conversation with with some house right. of god musicians who who share some history and in 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 the general assembly which was held in nashville tennessee the musicians used to play upstairs near the choir stand and that was a whole uh thing within itself we, we it was it was just rock it was a rock concert like you wouldn't believe every <laughs> single barely night mic, come yeah. on yeah all, all three amps lined up to, Bro, to get, that table? listen on to, the on table, the t- yeah. <laughs> And the Jesus. drums and the drums trying to compete, trying to with compete all with, of it with one microphone, with one mic, and at a at a four t- four twelve, and you can't right. see wide open. You can't see yeah, nothing. Can't L- see. Listen, in the in the era, in the era of, and I, I'll talk about me when I was playing in the nineties and in Come on, late eighties. Okay, so in an era where we didn't have monitors, and no, I'm not right. talking about sound monitors. I'm talking about video yeah. monitors where you can just see. What's right. going on? Everything devotional, um, praise and worship was downstairs. I still don't understand how so, that works. So when the song hit, right? <laughs> I'm the drummer. I'm, I got three seconds to catch the three groove. Seconds. I got three seconds to lock the BPM in three hard <laughs> and uh, not drop it. And not drop it. And you better drive that song where this what? <laughs> 4,000 square foot building can feel it and Come you on. barely amplify. Come, Come on. Come on. Well, and, I don't know. And, and adjust to the steel player and musicians that are playing. That are playing Because with you the drive with Henry wasn't the same drive with Ted. Or Calvin. Right. They're or Calvin. Or with Glenn. Or, or with Glenn. Right. Or with right. Chuck. Or with right. Arbery. Or, <laughs> or with Lonnie. There you go. Like, it was not the same. It man. wasn't the and same. Had, or the rhythm player that was playing with them. Because if it's Kenny or my dad or Alvin playing, their stroke pause <laughs> was so different. <laughs> you had to figure out how do you lock in with that. Right. And then, because like Derek said, we didn't have many bass players. So when you come to Nashville, it's bass mm-hmm. players. It's bass player times, it was like, okay, what is this now? Yeah. Yeah. So 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 we're <laughs> upstairs and and our refuge and our place of safety for the musicians was the choir room. <laughs> so when, choir when we got through jamming or when the preacher got up and we had a little break, and as a drummer, I you know there was not a drummer who played in Nashville upstairs when we had upstairs, when, when the music was upstairs, 
who did not sweat off of just one song. I don't care Bro, if it was sweat. a choir song. You was going to sweat, man. you know, because you had to play. And to be able to go into that room, which was most times, if not all, cool, quiet, you could hear everything that was going on, but it yep. was like our little ref, it was like our spot. Quite it was like where the musicians came to con yes. conjugate or congregate and and get together. It was that that era mm. of 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 getting um, uh, mentoring, tutoring, music lessons. There were still, happened, there were yeah. steels in that room. There were guitars yeah. in that room. P I, I, the video that I have, I'm, I'm gonna find it, Carl. But you the video that, that I have, man. it was it, Andy had his bass. And he was he was he was going around room with everybody. So Derek played. They were playing. They were playing everything. Phil oh. got it. They start. They they were playing Jocko. Everything. It, we they were just going off, and it was just like it was a moment. It was a moment Man. where all the guys were just we were just in there having fun on a four string bass, in the middle of service. Yeah. Service is going on. Yeah. All us in there cutting up. That but this is, but th yeah. it was fun because it was our refuge. It was our sanctuary. It was the place we came to regroup, to refine ourselves, to, um, to, to, to get to know our craft better. Yeah. That if somebody did something that year that I needed to take home with me, yes. Hey man, you you gotta you gotta show, show me, me that. that. Yeah. I need that. Okay. I need yeah. that. Like I gotta right leave. Now. <laughs> I, you would leave Nashville. Like yo, when I come back next year, I got something for them. Hello. And it wasn't. A, and it wasn't a, a spiteful thing. It was just I don't want to be left behind. That it was that what it was, mm -hmm. man. And that's what man. Them heydays. And again, not saying that their days aren't there for them, but for yeah. us, our it generation. That. It was that, it man. Was that. You looked forward to coming. You would come to day session just to hang out in the choir room. Come on. Come they on. They have an Deacon Union's program and, and some <laughs> other program. Everybody upstairs chilling with Mrs. Winters or Lee's, and you up there just chilling because because you were being poured into. And and that's that was the mentorship, though. Yes. Man. That's, that's, that's that. Each one is teaching one. You have right. the generations yeah. passing down knowledge, man. Yeah. Your Uncle Anthony hit me with something. Man, he was like, when you hit the drum, dig into the drum. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I get it. All the time I'm hearing all y'all say it, but to hear it from a bass player, like, nah, man, when you hit it, play through the drum like you're trying to go through the drum. Have you ever heard break it? Have you ever heard Anthony play drums? I never got I I've always heard I never heard him play drums or steel, but I heard he was cold on it's it's Uncle it's Uncle Anthony, man. Listen, like it don't shock me. Anthony it don't shock me. Anthony was Anthony was that wow. guy. Anthony was that guy. Anthony So did he play drums <clears throat> left handed or right handed? He played right handed. No, but he, he played he, bass left handed. He, he no, he played he played like a regular right handed drummer. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Um okay. But yeah, he played bass left hand and upside, upside down. down. So but you know the right story behind that. He's right handed. So you know you know the Crazy. story behind that. So, I know some of the stories. So my dad wouldn't show him how to play. <laughs> that sounds like so, your dad, man. So, so, so he's <laughs> so my dad's playing regular right hand bass. Right? And okay. Anthony would look over his shoulder. Now get the picture. He's looking over his shoulder to upside see down. Doing. To see what he's yeah. doing, so he played Derek left-handed with the strings flipped. Genius. So he's right-handed. So he's right-handed, but he played the bass left-handed with the strings reversed. So the heavy gauges were or, what on the bottom the of his neck, bottom of the neck, towards, the his, light, towards his thigh. Correct, and the light gauges are are near his head. It, again, that's that story because yeah, he crazy. wouldn't show him his hand. Anthony would look over his shoulder, yeah, but he yeah, was yeah. learning. And yeah. that's how he flipped it in, in yeah, the story wow. goes. But Anthony was that's phenomenal. Genius. Yeah, and he was that. His approach yes. to the music in, in, in on drums, he exposed, Anthony thing, Anthony's contribution to me, he was, he was my big brother, he was that uncle, but he was a musical genius, but he, he exposed me to the best yeah. drummers Ooh. ever. He Look he exposed me. <laughs> he yeah. exposed me to the best, and, and so when I would when I would be with them as a little, seven eight years old, um, going to 
Saturday night scenes, going to play for the the the, the Milton Brunson, going to play for Clay Evans, going to play for whoever. Um, uh, there was a, a, a Billy Carson and the Carson Singers. All of them. them. Yes. He would he would take me I'll with go. him. And Anthony could do everything that everyone in the band was supposed to do fluently. Wow. Whether it was keys, he he couldn't he, he if he couldn't play exactly, he knew the chord. Right. He knew the passing tone. He knew whatever right. it was he needed to do mm -hmm. on, on drums. Anthony was sick. Dude, Anthony Anthony taught me how to do triplets. Carl, Anthony was the one who taught me um, quad. Uh -huh. He he taught me quads and triplets. Yes, Him and sir. my uncle Rodney. And yes, Rodney. Hey, big ups, Uncle Rodney. Uncle Rodney, he Uncle Rodney's a beast, and and, yes, and shout out to his yes, uh, yes, his band Sweet Diesel, who who's doing great things. Um, they they taught me the ropes when it came down to musicianship and and just little things here or there, but it was about the the art of really being a musician. But yeah. you talk about could play fluently. Yes, it it yeah, just man. amazes me now just thinking about it. And and to think we you wanted the approval of them. Yeah. It wasn't so much their peers. It was if Damn. they vouch for me, I I'm know right. I'm good. I know I'm all right. <laughs> so right. like I said previously, like if my father and uncle who started me in this whole thing called production, if they vouch for me mixing this record, mm -hmm. the world can't say nothing to me. Right. Because not only are these my men these are my musical heroes, and then they're my father and my uncle. Right. So right. I'm getting I'm getting now again going biblical. I'm getting a father and a and, and that lineage blessing of mm -hmm. yes, you're right. And then I'm getting the okay from my mentors, and then they're my band members. Right. So I'm gonna hear the truth from one of those those roles they play. Right. And <clears throat> that's the benefit of a community of musicians. And I think that's what you heard, man, on the record. It's like we channel some of everybody. Um so like on um on pursuance mm -hmm. i did a little uh mac dillard tribute <laughs> in there a little bit <laughs> because out. again his dr yeah man so uh once derek stays on the one mm -hmm. i go to mac dillard then and the reason is because again the drive just felt like something that's what mac would be playing on in that moment and that's what was channeled. So it was like, yeah, I hear Elvin, but at this time it's church. Who do I see? Right. I see yeah, being yeah, exactly. big, big thunder glasses on, the suspenders, exactly. the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's just right here, man. It's all right here. <laughs> Stick halfway through. Stick halfway through. He he, oh, man. he hunched over a little bit, man. And that's what Tiny I see. knot in a tie. Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again, yeah, Derek. You that whole <laughs> thing, man. You got me <laughs> picturing all that, man. But that's that that's what when that drive got there, that's what's hitting my mind. It's not yeah. okay. What would Elvin do? Nah, I'm passing right. Elvin. No disrespect, but like it's church time, so yeah. I'm gonna channel who I saw play those hot jams in church mm -hmm. in those moments. That's what helped. Like, okay, here's oh man, this is something that Mac would do. All right, right. we're gonna hit it. And then we call it the Frankenstein role, but that's Terrence King, man. This is this, this oh, one yeah. role that that Terrence King would do, <laughs> man. And this it, it was the funniest thing. But when he would pull that out, man, you just knew, oh man, this jam, but he about to kill this yeah. jam. Yeah, we. So it's just it's like it's those little things like that, man. That I think that's what helps create your voice. It's like yeah. don't despise where you come from. Like yeah, so what if your church or your organization ain't as big as Church of God in Christ or Full right. Gospel Baptist or or uh, PAW, bump mm -hmm. that. You are placed where you are for a reason. <clears throat> Absolutely. Grow from that. And then if you can help, come back and help. Because yeah. you were given talents and tools for a reason. They weren't just for you. We yeah. aren't given these giftings just for ourselves. We're giving these giftings and this knowledge and wisdom and all of that to share right. and to help others. How are you going to help others and share? That's up to you, but we are given a reasonable portion of these giftings and talents to not keep to ourselves. Right. So yeah. let's sow them some kind of way we can. And I think the Love Supreme project just spoke to a lot of everyone sowing into us mm -hmm. and the world is just hearing 
the collection of lineage of, of information that's been passed down to us. And so now we're just able to put it together into, you know, a nice little package mm -hmm. of, you know, Love Supreme. And that it's a beautiful thing, man. And and for those of you all that are listening and you have not downloaded um, uh, the Campbell Brothers a Love Supreme, you are missing out. Download it today. Buy it. Don't just stream it. Buy it. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> support support the efforts that that they have put on this particular record. Um, I, this this interview is really really going going great. Um, one thing I want to cover before you guys go, um, mm -hmm. uh, Derek and Carlton, you you both of you are educators in your own right, and I want to talk a little bit about um, Derek first. Um, what you what you do in as far as education as it relates to your art craft in your school, if you want to go in depth and how, however in depth you want to go to that. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, about your online school. Absolutely. Uh, it's funny that we were just talking about, you know, being poured into and, mm -hmm. you know, not being able to leave this earth, you know, with the things that we came here or that, that we acquired. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I do a lot of what I do or put out a lot of what I put out because, you know, just the, you know, I, I wouldn't say accolades, but I, I want to be remembered as somebody that was generous, you know, with my gift, with, you know, with what I knew, with my knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to share that as much as possible or try to make it available to as many people as possible. That's my goal um, because I, I didn't have that, you know, even in growing up the way we did, uh, you could probably I could probably name base base players in the house of God, maybe on one hand, maybe. Uh, that I knew at the time. So it was tough for me. I didn't really have a, you know, a guide. Right. Uh, so, you know, when I would see guys like Kishaya and, um, and um, you know, uh, Big Al, Big you Al. know, I, Alvin, I would see Alvin guys. Lee. I was, yeah, I, Alvin <laughs> Lee. I would see guys like that. And I'm like, you know, trying to ask them questions all the time, you know, even Phil when he was playing bass before. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to give that opportunity to, to everyone that I have. So uh, quick, long, well, I'll go back to uh, how we kind of started, but sure. I was doing private lessons. I've done private lessons out right out of almost right out of high school. I started teaching, wow. um, so private lessons. It got got kind of busy. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't able to keep up everybody and all the schedules. It got crazy. I was you know working and had back to backs from seven in the morning to seven at night, literally. Wow. Um, so it was tough to do. So you know we just created a platform online uh, to where everybody can kind of get in. We create courses. Um, pre-recorded courses. We also have live stream classes now twice a week. We um, and just every single week, it just weekly lessons kind of, you know, going inside with some of the the students and having video Q and a chats and, you know, working on there is it's a lot easier for me to manage that way. So now we're at like, we're like at a few thousand students or a few thousand members now um, okay. to where I couldn't do that before with just one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. Um, so yeah, this is fifth year anniversary. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fifth year. That's big, man. That's big. Yeah, fifth year anniversary. I, I mean, I wasn't expecting for it to get that big, but now that now that it's here, I'm uh, we're here. Like I'm, yeah. you know, we're in it now. So this is what I do. This is what I dedicate sure, all of my time sure. to. Um, this is what pays the bills. Wow. <laughs> so if, if, if someone's you know, yeah. if someone's listening and they want to go to that website or go to that platform, where would you? DerekBennett.com. DerekBennett.com. So try to make it as simple as possible. And Derek, Derek is spelled D-A-R-I-C. Mm -hmm. B-E-N-N-E-T-T dot com. Dot com. That's dot com. Or you can just go on any one of my social media <laughs> platforms. You you can get to it from somewhere. Cool. I'm on just about everything. That's so, yeah. that's that's yes, amazing. Sir. And and Carlton, um, you are a teacher in your own right as well. Um, you're teaching at a at a university or at a college. Tell us more yeah, about so that. Yeah, so I am the technical director and instructor of music industry at Houghton College. So I've been there. This be my. This is my fifty fifth and a half year. I came in um, in between semesters. How okay. I ended up coming in um, again, a God thing. Wow. Wasn't even looking for this. Didn't even know that this kind of field of education existed. I'll show you how God works, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what I operate, um, what we operate, not just I, what we operate in, um, we are a small. Christian Liberal Arts College up in uh, southwestern New York. And our department focuses on three components of music industry. That is the worship arts component, obviously the production side, and then the um, 
live production aspect. So we cover everything from how to cover your house of worship, um, live sound. We deal with streaming and streaming production. So working on stream mixes, we help with that. We, um, we are literally in the middle of building out a state of the art, um, streaming production studio for our students to work out of. We have a fully state of the art, (laughs) beautiful, live sound production rig that our students get to work out on wow. and hone their chops as well as a state-of-the-art um, mac lab for them to work on their mixing and production and, and and recording studio and so what we offer there for our students is the ability to hone your skills in an environment that keeps you comfortable with who you are wow. and um Amazing. we know that college isn't easy mm-hmm. and we know that college allows uh many times makes you or present you with opportunities to forget who you are. But we strive to foster a thriving environment that is Christ-centered, but is also enriched and focused on giving a high quality education. Mm -hmm. And so I am very proud of our department. Um, We have one of the highest recruiting departments for the whole college of Houghton College. So big ups for that, as far as a recruitment class and um, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're looking to do bigger and great things. And so um been very fortunate and blessed to have been here this long, even though when you say it out loud, it doesn't seem that long. Yeah. Time is just flying by. But yeah, very fortunate to help teach. Um, you know, we offer postal certifications, which um, I'm thankful to be able to offer that to students. And then uh, production courses, mixing courses, music business courses we offer. And then again, the, the, a very important aspect that I'm very happy that we have is again live sound for worship, mm-hmm. and I think that's what's missing, especially for our black churches. Right. We don't understand the importance of sound. Faith comes by <laughs> hearing, <laughs> and so if you aren't properly hearing the word of God, <clears throat> hey, let's work on that. Um, let's yeah. resolve that because why? You can go to these secular events and these secular venues and they're investing in their tools to keep their parishioners happy. Right. Why right. aren't we doing the same thing? Right. And so what our college program is showing our students is that, hey, we have to equip ourselves as Christians to have the right tools in place so that when people come in, we aren't the hindrance of their faith being equipped and strengthened. We aren't in the way. We're only there enhancing. So, again... Very thankful for the opportunity Houghton College has provided me and offer and, al- and allowed me to be, to be frankly, to be myself. So right. the pro the project the the project the program mm-hmm. is is mine in a sense, but it's God's because yeah. anything that we've tried to do or try to put forth, all the ideas literally come from Him because I can't think of this stuff on my own because right. I'm I'm not trying to say I'm that brilliant, but it's literally God and I know it's God because the fruits of the ideas are. Are being shown and so i've had students that, that have gone on to be hired for world-renowned tours for a lot of the um awesome. great uh christian artists and some some are now at mega churches as technical re- technical directors themselves running multi-campuses mm-hmm. from our program and so that speaks to what god is doing with our school and people are like why you keep building up god because he's the reason why everything works. Oh, well. And so yeah. that's the yeah. um that's the the main just there. So the beautiful thing about working in that department is I get to be around music 25/8 wow. in some form yeah. or fashion. So wow. I'm always able to work on music in some form or fashion whether it's production or or playing or 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 you know um mixing or whatever like that. So yeah. I'm I'm very fortunate to 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 be in this position and um hey man Houghton College www.houghtoncollege.edu will be happy to help you and I didn't even mean, mean to make that rhyme to see how God works <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> we'll be happy to help you out and um and again not saying I know everything and I'm the end all be all but I would definitely like to love to help our our churches on you know their live sound production or even for their streams because streaming is now a ministry tool it and really I've seen a lot of streams from our people from our mm-hmm. people yeah. that it's tough and faith isn't being heard I'll put it like that yeah. <laughs> so I would love to help out any way that I can um Carlton 
Campbell on Instagram. No, Carl Carl D. Campbell on Instagram and Carlton Campbell on Facebook. And uh, the website will be up soon. Revis- revising some things in regards to what we want to present in regards to uh, the services and everything like that. But yeah, I, I just again, I want to be a help to our people yeah. where I can and how I can. So yeah, please reach out if you need help. Be happy to help and 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 make what you all do for the kingdom um, more better suited for what we have to compete with in regards to the news, the distraction of you know these devices that we have now. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, so. hey, listen, both of you guys. Uh, let me just say to you openly, I'm proud of what you're doing. I'm proud of you both. Um, in your efforts man. to oh, God, man. to to teaching to to your contribution to music to the the art to the teaching to the to the um, uh, you know the 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 recording aspect of everything that you all do, I, I'm so proud of not only your um, approach to it, your attitude toward it, but your black men, you're making things happen. You're you're in a you're in positions that most people wish they were in to not only be creative, do what you want, have liberty to 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 use that creative tool to create the world that you want and that you're looking into the future to 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 make a norm. That that yeah. says a lot. Um and um uh, kudos to you both. Um that that takes a lot of hard work. It, it it's definitely a representation of of where you come from, um your yeah. your heritage, your parents um, and, and again, the God in us, you know, that, that's the one thing that's been very, uh, trans transparent through everyone that God is central. He's yes, the sir. center right. of everything that we do. And that speaks volumes. Um, one of the, one of the last questions I ask all, all of my guests is what, if you were to, to write a book or do a movie, what would it be? And what would it be about? <laughs> <laughs> right. What, what, what would that book or that movie be about? I can't really answer that because I think I'm still writing the story. That's fair. Um, and I pray that when when the story is completed, that God is pleased, and that somebody or people can be encouraged and uplifted and inspired to not be me but to be the best of them because of what my story outlined good bad and indifferent yeah um, there, there are a lot of drummers that are going to listen to this podcast and they are playing their industry drummers or they could be up and coming industry drummers they're church drummers drummers from all over what what bit of advice would you give them um in their approach or in in in, in a daily practice of, of being a drummer. Okay. First and foremost. All right. So as a drummer, your first job is time. So loops are cool. Metronome is better. The metronome will develop your meter in a way that loops cannot mm-hmm. loops. You can hide. Um, your timing can sway with the loop. You can get lazy because the loop, the subdivision, depending on how the loop is programmed, can let you cheat if your time is rock solid. And what recording will show you is that your timing will suck because you aren't putting that time in. A metronome, make that your best friend. It's going to suck. You're going to hate it. But the more you get used to working out with that as a drummer and a musician, anybody, but a metronome, sit with that thing. Feel is good, but time is better. Yeah. Um, that's good. first that's first and foremost, the metronome. Second thing, don't close your ears off. Listen to as much music as you can. So whether it's the Dixie Chicks, Georgia, Florida Line, Luke Bryant, right? You like who are these artists? Exactly. Go look them up. Yeah. Whether it's Anomaly or Moonchild or, you know, Charlie Puth. Check out who they are, whether it's Corey Wong and Dirty Loops. Check out who they are. Yeah. Chris Benoit, um, uh, Lionel Luque. Check out who they are, right? Grow your ears. Listen to other things. Listen to other genres of music than your norm. 
because that's yeah. going to help grow your voice. Yeah. And as a drummer, hey, man, go back and study them greats. You'll be shocked. I'll say this, and we, what you hear in gospel drumming now, Vinny Calyuta was doing 50 years ago. Hello. Billy Cobham was doing 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Mike Clark was doing 50 years ago. Steve Gadd, 60 mm -hmm. years ago, yep. right? <laughs> Clyde Stubblefield and all those guys, 60 years ago. Yep. Don't be too, don't be too high on yourself that you can't go back and listen to everybody. Somebody right. can show you something, That's right. whether they're playing it or right or not. Always keep your ears open. Number two, number three, just be humble, man. Because at the end of the day, somebody's going to replace you. A younger, mm -hmm. cheaper, cooler, <laughs> easy to get along with right. version of you is going to come <laughs> around. <laughs> so wow. are you a good person to hang out with off your instrument? Work on that. Mm. Um, are you a credible person? Do you show up on time for gigs? Do you come knowing the material? Work on that. Give is your word your bond. Can people say, "Hey, he said he's going to do that, or she's going to do that." Can they count on you right. to do that? Because again, a cheaper, younger, more hungrier version is going to come tap you on the shoulder, and when they do, hey, ain't nothing you can do but acknowledge it. Yeah. So keep that 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 keeps I'm not, that keeps me humble on the daily, knowing right. that there is some young whippersnapper in their gym hunting me down <laughs> yeah. so that keeps me with my head on a swivel so that one i'm not settling on my yesterday i think Giannis said it best is like focusing on yesterday is a pride of what you did worrying about the future is being anxious be in the moment of now that's good take care of now Take care of your time you have right now because tomorrow isn't promised and you can't change your future. That's right. So work on right now. So metronome, open your ears up, stay humble because somebody will be replacing you eventually. Wow. Hey, listen, <clears throat> phenomenal advice. That, yeah. <laughs> so, so Derek, same same question. We we'll end from there, man. What 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 can contribution um if you were doing a movie or book if you don't have an answer to that what what advice would you give bass players musicians coming up and yeah uh just a little tidbit uh you know the, the movie question is funny man uh, okay. i was sitting there thinking you know i never thought about this but i never really said it out loud either but i always wonder like those movies like you know like ray like with ray charles you know mm -hmm. the like temptations movie mm -hmm. uh uh, what is the other movie? Kind of like records, right. like that. Those type of movies, like the perspective or the point of view from the, the band, like do the whole movie, but have a member of the band be the main person. Like I always want to see that, you know, how they would kind of interpret that because you always see like the main character. Yeah. So that would be kind of fun to to see a little bit. Now that I'm thinking about it, like okay. just to see that that mm -hmm. role. Yeah. Um, but uh, I always thought about it too whenever I'm watching the movies. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the the but the other the other thing, the tip for the bass players. Um, one thing that I can say, uh, oh, so one thing I can say, like, you know, how people say, you know, less is more when, you know, playing bass, like you don't need to play all of this stuff. Like that's, that's BS to me, you know, mm -hmm. it's a place and it's a time for it okay. because a busy bass line may be the time at that point for that, okay. you know, in a specific song or even playing more. So it's not just, you have to figure out where it lies. Right. Right. Because more sometimes is a is a good thing mm -hmm. you know but playing if you're just playing less all the time that like what genres are you going to play you know you can only it's go true. so far with that one genre like if you're playing something like uh like carl mentioned like charlie pooth like a bass line like that those are kind of you know those are interesting in sync bass lines and they're kind right. of busy but they feel great right you know so you have to know the difference between where to use and where not to right um so just don't get stuck in that. Yeah, the less is more. Right. You know, there's a t there's a place and a time for that. So that's basically it. I love it. I love it, man. Listen, I, I appreciate you guys, and <clears throat> not only for you you taking time out to to do this interview, but just your contribution to to music and and what you're doing in education. Um, in such a time where um, everyone is pivoting from the brick and mortar to 
uh, to streaming and, and, and doing live podcasts mm-hmm. and live, you know, live videos online, you know, it's, it, we're in a different world. We're, we're in a different world and, and, um, you guys are there, you're showing up in these spaces and you're doing it with excellence and that's, that's commendable. So Appreciate kudos that. to you both. Them, man. Keep, keep, moving, here. keep pushing. Um, I'm, I'm a fan both of you whether Amen. you know it or not i'm 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 always pushing and rooting for you yeah. guys so been a fan so for every, years hey man <laughs> whatever <laughs> i could do to support you all let me know i will make sure your link um these these both these gentlemen's um link and bios and, and websites are in this particular podcast um carlton Derek, thank you thank I, you man thank I, you for having me on i Absolutely, appreciate you guys man. doing this man no I problem doing it What? <laughs>